Hello everyone, happy Friday. My name is Angela and this is Let's Paint Now. So I'm very happy and pleased to be starting the third session of our free uh, classes. And this is actually the third and last week. I hope you've enjoyed the two uh, past weeks and you had a lot of fun with me. I can't wait to start this final session with you and uh, have a lot of fun. So um, hopefully you've all checked our Instagram and Facebook pages and you know a bit more about us. Just want to let you know that Let's Paint Now runs classes on a weekly basis. We run these Friday classes every Friday, 2 to 4, and there's always a new theme that you, new theme that you can find on our website. So if you want to check out more on the upcoming classes, you got to go to our website www.letspaintnow.com or on our Instagram page where we do our actually almost daily updates of new events and upcoming um, promotions, so on and so forth. Talking about promotion, we have ongoing a very nice offer for a limited time period of the online classes. So you can buy something called a gift card that you can offer to either yourself or your best friend or a family member that you know loves art and wants to get initiated and etc. And that is a pack of either three five or ten classes and obviously they're all discounted so please go to the website and check the gift card section and grab them right now as they're still on okay so that is for the online classes there's also another section that we just opened very newly and I'm super proud of we're gonna be adding more and more items there and if again you feel like um, getting yourself a nice present that is the best place to go and that is the art corner the art corner on our website is a place where we sell original art pieces that i personally have painted so and they're at a very affordable price compared to art pieces around the market so what's really interesting about them is the present ones are in the website but i also am updating it with new paintings every week so i will be painting starting 2021 jan I will be painting new elements and they'll be constantly uploaded on our website. So keep an eye. And if there's something you would like to paint to, to grab, please send me a message because they sell out quite fast. On another note, if there's something really particular that you would like me to paint from our previous classes, not from something that you would like on your own, uh, because I don't, I don't have time for personal requests, but anything that you feel that you'd like or you don't find it on our website and it's a painting that I've personally done before, please drop me a message and I'll let you know about the possibilities of having that one done. There's also different sizes, which is really cool. You can order them in smaller sizes or even really large sizes. I don't know if I have the owl. It's not right here, but the owl painting is like almost a meter with 80 centimeters, quite wide. We can have really big formats done for you that you can offer. All right, let's get started. So let's have a quick look at my paper and set up right here. I have a nice little white paper that I scotch taped with washi tape. Washi tapes are paper tapes and they're tapes that I absolutely love. They come in different shapes and designs and they're fantastic because once the painting is done, because half of the painting is in and half of the painting is out, I just need to peel the tape and it actually gives me a wonderful white frame. On another note, I use a, usually use a set of three brushes and I also give the name, so maybe you can get used to it with me. I call them Papa Bear, Mama Bear and Baby Bear. I think it's a kind of a metaphor for me to say big, small and large, but that's the words that I've been using forever, so I'm gonna keep on saying that. You can say small, medium, but I'll keep on saying Papa, Mama and Baby. This is the Papa, nice to meet you. This is the mama bear and this is the baby bear. The reason why it's papa because it makes big coverages. Mama is more refined. She has a big load of paint. Bristles catch a lot of paint, but she also has a very refined point. And obviously baby bear is for teeny tiny details. Always have them on a towel right here to remove excess of paint. Right here is my palette. It's a paper palette. Very nice, um, a very nice paper that doesn't absorb the paint, which is wonderful because it leaves the pigments very fresh and vibrant. And I also have a little towel, very, very dirty here for the excess of paints. For the paints, I use acrylics mostly, uh, Dalaroni or Faber Castell, also really good, very affordable and cheap ones. For some colors, I don't need for them to be really expensive, so I use them. As simple colors but my main main pigments are Dalaronis they're wonderful very vibrant colors and I absolutely love them all right 
So let's get going. So for now, the colors that we will be using as a start are yellow, red, and white. Okay, so maybe just yellow and red as a start would be good. I might even not need the white later on, but let's just start with the yellow and red, okay? I've poured over here around the size of a teaspoon, and I'm gonna start the painting with my Papa Bear brush. Oh, I forgot, really important, big jar of water, big bucket of water to do the mixing, the cleaning of the colors and everything. You can have two of them, I always say it. You can always use one in order to clean up the other brushes. One thing that's super important that I forgot to tell you, which is extremely important, is that I would love for me to see pictures of those paintings. So, when you're done with your painting of today, please do snap a picture and post it on our Instagram by tagging Let's Paint Now, so I can finally see the painting and actually comment it for you. So please don't hesitate into sending it to me at my Instagram, Facebook, or even as a private message on my, my website. All of them will lead to me. So please do share your piece of art. I always love to see your results and see how you've made it. Let's do this. So you gotta grab your Papa Bear brush, okay? And you gotta dip him in the water that allows the bristles to open up and to kind of refresh the brush. Then we're gonna go with a nice um, yellow color. Make sure the brush is fully clean. We're gonna go with a nice yellow color and start absorbing that within the brush. So I'm blending it a little bit, okay, right here. And I'm gonna trace a line roughly a little bit below half of the canvas. This is half, a little bit below. This is going to be my horizon line, okay? My papa bear being flat, it's very easy for me to make a nice straight line. Now you can make it very slowly, you can make it in several times. You don't need to do it in one shot, okay? Then you're gonna go and you're gonna cover all the bottom area over here with the same yellow paint. So a nice, very juicy and fragrant shade of yellow at the bottom of your canvas. The paper, by the way, that I'm using is a 300 GSM acrylic paper. So it's a paper that kind of absorbs the paint quite well, does not wobble and reacts very well to uh, water. So I could be pouring water more and more and I'm gonna do that as we go along. You're gonna see the paper is always gonna remain steady and it's not going to leave me alone. So that is the base of um, my painting. So almost one third of it is completely covered with yellow. Um, the next color that I'll be doing is a semi orangey shade. So I want to kind of go and dab some red paint and I am going to be blending a bit of orange on the side. So not with all of the yellow, a part of the yellow is going to become orangey. And how do I do that? I'm going to go and place that orange uh, right next to the yellow, on top of the yellow. Okay, like this. But as I'm doing this, I'm actually going to be blending the yellow and the orange by moving my brush slightly to the bottom. So it's sliding a little bit down. So I've placed the orange first, and then without adding any color, and on my yellow that is not yet dry, I'm giving it a beautiful gradient from the top to the bottom. So that way I know that the road from one color to the other is perfectly blended. Now I can very confidently move upwards. How is that gonna happen? I'm gonna keep on creating an orange and adding more and more red into the blend. Super simple. You've gotta take the yellow and add more red to it. It's gonna get darker and darker. So now I'm gonna add a bit more orange over here and keep on pushing upwards. The whole process is about bringing the gradient all the way up. So you've got to keep on pushing the color and it's going to get slowly, slowly darker, darker, I mean more orangey as we go upwards. You're going to get more pigment, keep on brushing it, keep on moving left and right. My brush acts almost like a pendulum. You know, I always say it's like a pendulum. It moves left and right and it kind of moves the paint on both directions and I like to kind of grab the paint and slide it just like this. Keep on moving upwards and keep on adding more and more red to a point where on the final third uh, area on top it's gonna get very orangey and strong vibrant um, at the top. 
It's still orange, it's not yet red, but it's very vibrant, way more vibrant than it was before. So I've continuously added the red and now it's like leaning towards the very strong area of that orange. Okay, I'm gonna go very, very intense. You can go even more tangy and just reinforce the red. One last batch at the very bottom. At, sorry, at the very top. What am I saying? There you go. Now it's almost fully red. Like there's no yellow at all in it. You know, like really powerful red. Really savanna red. Very, very nice and powerful. So this is how I've placed my gradient. Starting with a very solid yellow at the bottom. Then I've created a nice orangey area in the middle by doing a slight backwards gradient. By pulling my orange a bit down so they blend together. And then I moved it slowly, slowly to the top by adding more and more red so that all the way to the top I get this very strong and powerful red shade. Okay? Now I'm gonna put my Papa Bear in the water for him to rest and I'm gonna take another brush. I don't know if you still have some yellow. I hope you do. If not, just like me, pour yourself a little bit more of the yellow color over here. Okay? Ideally, we would wait for the whole thing to get dry, but as I'm ongoing with the class, I will not do that. Instead, I'm going to use another technique and make my paint opaque by using some white paint. In your case, you have two options. Either you wait for the whole thing to get dry, or you can actually dry it with a blow dryer. That is also a possibility. Or you could just do it like me and add another drop of white into the blend, which is going to make the paint more opaque. Why do I want it to be opaque? Because I really want this yellow that I'm going to apply right now to be more vibrant. So I'm using my Mama Bear brush, the medium size brush, and I'm making a nice yellow and white blend right over here. So now I'm sure that this yellow is very, very opaque, okay? I'm going to go in the middle of my canvas and pull a little bit up. So basically it's at the middle of this Two thirds. So this is one third yellow, one third orange, one third reddish uh, orange. I'm gonna pull this sun in the middle area of the more orangey tangy colors. And I'm gonna be really confident and trace the most circular, the circlest circle I can make. If it's not really circular, you can go back at it and refresh the shape by moving around with your brush. You can take your time, you don't need to rush. And like I said, ideally waiting for the background to dry would be best, okay? I'm using my Mama Bear brush, but you could be also confident using a smaller brush, that's also a possibility. But the idea is to try to make the shape as circular and as opaque as possible. I don't want it to be translucent, because right now mine is transparent. I'm gonna try to make it a nice white coating on top so that it does not show any transparency anymore. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now I'm just swirling around, trying to make the shape look as circular as possible. There you go. And there you go. Okay, there it is. Now it's still a little bit mixed with my background, but what I'm gonna do right now is going to make it more opaque. I'm gonna go with a little bit more white and I'm going to be adding more opacity by blending it with the white color, okay? So the more I add white, the more opaque it's gonna become. And in fact, there's something really funny that's gonna happen right now is that I'm gonna hold my brush flat, and that is a technique that I teach in my classes. By holding the brush flat, you apply the color for it to stay there. It will never leave. So like that, it does have a thicker coat, obviously, because there's way more painting, but it's not going to be uh, blending with the background first, and then second, your colors are gonna be way more vibrant. So try that at home, and you can see exactly what I mean by using your brush as flat as possible, because the moment you don't hold it flat, you are actually removing the paint rather than positioning it. Okay. Then I'm gonna do another curve at the bottom, right over here. And I'm gonna close the shape into being as opaque as possible. There you go. 
okay? Now you can perfect it and you can also take your time into doing it. The idea is to really try to attain the more the most circular shape that you can, okay? And also opacity is really key. I want my yellow to be very vibrant and so that's what I'm actually working towards. Now, the next thing I wanna do is kind of give it this fuzzy savanna feel where, you know, nothing is really clear, things are more um, blurry and etc. So for that, I'm gonna be using a flat brush, which is like this, but like a mama bear flat brush. You could be using a round brush, but in fact, it has to be smaller than the papa bear. It has to be a medium sized one, okay? What do I do for that to happen? I'm gonna take a bit of yellow, okay? I'm gonna start faking some clouds in the background, you know, like a little bit like this. I'm gonna create some cloudy effect, like very peaceful and serene in different areas. But I'm also gonna do something really funny and I'm gonna go and eat some of the sun, okay? I'm gonna kind of do the same and go over the sun with that cloudy area. Okay, so I'm brushing some of the sun, pieces of the sun outside on the background. So I'm intentionally going over it, okay? You can even integrate a little bit of white over there just to make it stronger and more opaque. It's literally little touches of clouds and little touches of, you know, light. It's again my light yellow, which is a, a blend between yellow and white together. But it's just it's really nice horizontal lines, not too much action going on, very peaceful, very savannah-like, and very smooth also, okay? And as you lean downwards, obviously the colors become lighter and lighter. As you go really down, it's just super light. And you reach a stage where it's completely white. <coughs> Excuse me. So there you go. You can eat the sun in many areas. I've eaten the sun in three spots and I think that's more than enough. Okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna be pouring some black paint, okay? On the side of your canvas, of your palette, sorry, you're gonna be pouring a little bit of black paint. And now there are two options. Either you take the papa or you take the mama bear, but you take the brush that you're the most confident with because we're going to be placing the ground level. The ground level is basically the grass, but it's going to be done in black in this case because in this language or this painting's language there is no green so um roughly at half the area of the first third so at the bottom you know we had the one third second third and third third at half of half of that area you're going to be positioning a nice black opaque area so you're going to go on top of that yellow and cover it with some full black I love the contrast is so cool it's so juicy so fragrant I absolutely love it and try to make it as straight as you can although it does not bother much or it doesn't really uh, make any difference because you're gonna see now why I say that all right there we go I'm gonna cover it all and now we're gonna be using a brush called the fan brush. Either you've got one of these, or you can use a flat brush, or even you can do it with a non-flat brush, okay? This is a special effect, but it can also be done with a brush that is not with a special effect, and it can also be done with a brush that is completely flat, like this one, okay? So there's several, several ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you how the fan brush does it, and it's really, really cool. You grab the paint with the tip of your brush. I'm going to show you how. There you go. You grab the paint with the tip of your brush and you actually literally just brush the, the grass from the bottom to the top and it naturally gives you beautiful grassy effect with zero effort. Like I'm doing nothing and I'm getting this beautiful grass savanna jungle effect kind of thing, you know? It's very easy and super smooth. And it's done in no time. You can hold it flat or you can hold it like this. Both are wonderful results uh, givers. And there you go. So this is also a second way. Uh, first, this is the first way, sorry, that I wanted to show you to do the grass. 
You can also do it with this brush. That's also a possible way. You just need to hold it with the tip of the brush. So I'm gonna show you. You grab the paint with the tip of the brush and you just swallow the brush from the bottom to the top so that the paint can actually trace these beautiful lines. It can also be done with a flat brush. They all three do give wonderful solutions. All right? So we now have only two little steps left. We're going to be planting the trees and we're going to be drawing our little elephants, okay? Planting, planting the trees is extremely simple. It's a technique that I call the press and release. So the press and release is us using a medium-sized brush, like the mama bear brush, and loading it with a black paint. You basically just hold the brush in a way that you push it at the bottom. So you push the brush at the bottom, okay? And as you're zigzagging it on its way upwards, you're actually releasing the paint into becoming a thinner line and a very more subtle branch. So this is how I call the push. So this is what I call the press and release, the push and release kind of technique. And then what you can do is you can refine those branches on top and go really nicely decorating it in whatever way you want, but the base will be there already for you to work with which is wonderful. We can even do a smaller one right over here, another press and release one with a subtle ending on top, a baby kind of branch, and there you go. Now, how are we going to dress these up? You can even do it with the fan brush if you have one. I'm gonna show you how it's easy to be doing it with a fan brush. The way that this vegetation is, or the grass or the greenery is, is flat coverage. So if you go with it and cover it like this, each, every, each and every branch, with a very flat and nice smooth line, you're gonna see that the whole tree will look wonderfully um, savannah-ish. Look at that. Yay, it's beautiful. Then you can also fill it in a bit more in the middle. You can also do it with a mama bear brush. I'm gonna show you how on the teeny tiny one. You just need to dab dab the brush and make little stripes of paint, but tinyly kind of moving them in different areas. You can make groups of painting uh, lines, you can make like little groups over here, like clusters of dab dabs here, and then leave it empty and do other clusters. So they kind of kind of faking the effect of what the, fa the fan brush is doing, but in a very nice and uh, natural way. And you can add smaller ones. Obviously, if you're more comfortable with a smaller brush, you can actually go with a baby brush also. It's literally up to you and you can crowd it as much as you want. Like you can really go darker and add more and more to it. It's up to you really. You can literally go really dark over here and make it more crowded. That's really, really nice. It just adds more action to the whole thing. Okay? So now a little elephant over here is so, so simple. You've been asking me how to draw and wondering how to make it happen. It's actually way easier than it looks like it. You basically have to draw an oval shape, okay? An oval for the body of the elephant. And this is what I mean by oval. I'm obviously using my black color, just black. And I'm doing an oval for the, for the body. Now the top of the body of the elephant is not like this. It has to have a little curve. So you're gonna do a little bump like this, almost like a heart shaped top in order to make, it's like a bean basically. He looks like a bean, a little bean, okay? So you make an oval first and then you curve it in a way that you've got this very nice um, top part which look like a heart, okay? First circular and then the top part. Now, for the, for the next step, we're going to be adding the head and the trunk. So the head is directly connected to this part which we created right here. So it's another extension of it but a very thinner one. So it's almost like the press and release, but you gotta do it in a way that it actually goes like super thin into creating the trump effect. How is that? So I'm gonna say it again. You basically start from the bean area and you connect it in order to kind of make a swirl or a twirl or whatever you wanna call it and making it super thin. So that is faking the trump of the elephant. Then you go, you make a little bump on top to create the ear and the ivory horns go over here. Now we're going to be obviously adding the legs of the elephant. So we're gonna have one leg on the inside that is straighter. You can obviously have a bigger tummy. You can make him more chubbier. 
and just add more body to his tummy and then add another leg on the back and then always the leg on the front is more forward looking and then another one kneeling for him to look like he's walking so this is not yet fully connected to his body so i just want you to kind of blend them together from the bottom so that it completely connects with the body so that it feels like one you know so he doesn't look like the head and the body are dismantled now we're gonna add a little tail super super smooth very very silky and the ending of it very cute and there you have your wonderful little elephant you can also go back and use again the fan brush or any other line and you can add a little bit more grass if you want so that he feels like he's blending even more with the entourage or the grass and you can add more action now that you know what's happening you can kind of raise them maybe the bush is a bit higher and that is the wonderful effect of the savannah painting there you go you've got your painting in no time and it looks super good and now i'm going to show you how to peel the tape very nice smoothly so that you can get a nice white frame all around it and be careful not to have the paint touch your painting have the brush uh, sorry this, this the areas of the scotch tape which are not dry make sure to peel them away from the painting because i often make this mistake and you can have it fully colored because the paint on it is not dry at all and then you peel the final part and that is the beautiful aha moment you've got your painting done Obviously, you can wonderfully go back at it and retouch it as much as you want. For instance, I would personally maybe add a bit more um, white over here or yellow maybe. It's a bit too vibrant, too yellowy. I would kind of dim it a bit down. Yes, and maybe accentuate a bit more this one. You can add one that's poking out from outside completely. You can just retouch the details in whichever way you'd like. You can even light up the sun more or kind of give it more of a yellow color. It literally up is literally up to your own taste okay so this is how you do a very quick and nice looking Savannah painting I really hope you enjoyed it and it's literally three colors just yellow red and some black you could use some white if needed if not don't use it so minimal material but a really nice effect that you've got at the end I really hope you enjoyed it I really hope you have fun if you um, if you liked it, please do share it with your friends. Let them know about us. Tell them that um, it's happening every Friday, 2 to 4, and you can come together and connect to our online paintings. Note also one thing. The moment you buy one ticket for our online classes, you could be many joining through the same device. So if you're in the same house, whether you're siblings, cousins, or your friends invited over, you can all paint with one fee. So make sure to say that so that it's clear for everybody else. Don't forget the gift cards, they're available right now just yet, so you can actually grab them and have them for a cheaper price, which is fantastic. And you can offer, their to, offer them to someone that's also a wonderful gift present. So many have done it already and they're super happy about it. Thank you so, so much. Don't forget to check our Instagram page. I will be waiting for your pictures and your wonderful paintings. Send them to me and tag me at Let's Paint Now so I can see them. Have a wonderful Friday and see you soon. Bye-bye.